G'day viewers, my name is Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists in Australia do what they do. Well, good day viewers and welcome back to Colour in Your Life. Uh, we're down at Werribee today near Melbourne, a uh, little chilly, wintertime exploration. Yes. And I'm with the delightful lady called Janet Knight. Welcome to the show, Janet. Thank you very much. It's wonderful to be here. Uh, Janet has an amazing setup. She's also a professional art teacher, apart from being a professional artist. And she has the most magnificent studio down here attached to her uh, home where she actually does workshops with obviously a lot of the artists in the area. Yes. But Janet also paints some really beautiful natural scenes. I mean, I love landscapes. Uh, she has waterfalls, the way that she puts them together. She uses a number of different type of techniques to do that. But you've, you've got a background. You did a uh, diploma in fine arts from Ballarat University That's in right. 1984. That's right. And then from there, you've really had an extensive experience uh, as far as a teacher and an artist. Can you tell me a little bit about that at all? Well, following uni, I worked in advertising. Mm -hmm. and that was for a few years. And yep. then uh, after that, children came along and as they do. As they do. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to sort of squeeze things in. But teaching just sort of followed from, from that. And then I enjoyed it so much that so I just kept going and kept learning and, 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 and my studio sort of expanded and sure. classes expanded and it's all just it's all just flowed on from there, so it's been very, very incredible. So yeah, and you've really made very. she's really made a great success out of, of what you've done, and you know it's very hard to sort of balance that and juxtapose the whole thing with an artist being right brained and then being left brained. But it sounds like you're right, well, right in the middle of that. I just try to be organised. That's all. I wouldn't okay. say I'm very mathematical. <laughs> <laughs> I bet I'm very I'm a very organised person. So. Um, yeah, I just try to keep keep the ball rolling, keep yeah. everything everything running smoothly, and it, it works. And everyone has a great time here, and and you know I love to paint, and yeah, yeah so I've got I've got a good life. Yeah, and, I, and she's, <laughs> she's won numerous awards as well. I mean, there are a number if you look uh, around the studio, and there's even a little shop in there where she sells stuff as well, which is just great. But you can see all of the awards that uh, Janet's actually won over the years, which is pretty amazing. But we're going to uh, do. Uh, two landscape pieces today yes. and then show you guys the techniques and she does I mean wonderful reflection tremendous atmosphere in these pieces it's it's sort of like that that nature that you you put into it you make these up as well they're sort of like a montage of ideas but the fact is that they're just so pure in the sense of what nature's all about and uh, I think that you're going to uh, help us see into that today I hope so Graham. that'd be great so. okay well, let's so. go and have, let's go and have a look then Okay, well I can see you've got some glad wrap over your palette there and you've actually had these in the freezer. I have. And the reason that the glad wrap is there? Well it depends on how long you're working on the, on the painting for Graham uh -huh. because um, working on this style of painting uh, generally two, three weeks maybe on the one particular painting mm -hmm. on and off. Sure. So what I would do is I would wrap it in cling wrap, keeps all the oxygen out away from the paint and then I'll pop it in the freezer and the freezer just keeps it in a bit of a su suspended animation. It doesn't actually freeze sure. the pigment, it keeps it quite loose mm -hmm. and I can take it straight from the freezer, take my cling wrap off and away I go. Ready to go. Another, another great tip from a brilliant artist. All right, well, we'll whip that one off then. Yes. And you're going to start to put some colours down. I do put a lot of uh, thought into painting before I actually start. Sometimes it drives me crazy. Yeah. 
because I'll, I'll sit here for an hour just studying my photo and I won't actually have started yet. Which is a, which is a good point about it really yeah, is, yeah. yeah. But it's all worth it in the end. Sure. It's worth it in the end and uh, if you've had a very stressful day sometimes I can't even start a painting because I need that time and I need that time to study yeah. my photograph before I actually leap into it because there's no use rushing into it because you want the results at the end sure. and if you if you do rush into a painting you're not going to get those exquisite mm -hmm. beautiful little beautiful colors coming through beautiful result at the end so sure. it's very important to take your time and to think about it a lot before you start okay so you've got a mixture there of uh that's your medium, which is... Yes, it's just a lot, of a lot of turpentine and a little a bit, bit of linseed, oil. yes. Okay. I like to keep the medium nice and, nice and fluid. I don't like the thicker mediums. Yeah. And can you see that I'm picking up both colours at once? And then just sort of letting And then it putting them on. And where I have a little bit of an area, yeah. I can throw in a little bit more of our red gold. This is Australia red gold, by the way, everybody. So one thing that I'm, I'm noticing when you're actually doing this is you're doing this. It's almost like a cross hatching. Yeah, with your wrist. Whereas That's most right. people would be going like that. No, no. So what you're doing is you're creating the atmosphere just simply by the cross hatching. That's as well. right. That's right. You're creating a little bit of blending yeah. in the painting. Yeah. yeah. There's a beautiful piece of um, the bridge in um, Givany. Oh at, yes. Uh, Manet. So you actually went to the yes. Manet's place. Yes, I did. Yeah, yes. It's sort of a, yes. it's a bit of a pilgrimage <laughs> that one, isn't it? Oh, it was just an amazing. It was an amazing day for me. Yeah. To be standing in Monet's garden mm. it was just amazing. My daughter, my daughter was commenting that I was getting a little bit too excited because it was uh -huh. just a garden to her, and and it wasn't just a garden to me because you know it's Monet, so, it's, it's Monet. It's so iconic. Oh, but I, even even Monet said amazing. that his best achievement was actually not his art but his garden. Well, there you go. He, he always made that statement. He said, "No, my best work." And is I can my relate because I'm a gardener as well. Okay. So yeah, I love my garden. Well, we just saw your beautiful garden out in the back. Glorious home as well. Oh, thank you. You've obviously spent a lot of time and you're an avid gardener. Yes, at the same yes, time. I really enjoy my garden. Yeah. yeah. You sort of see the uh, juxtaposed between Monet and Knight. It's just fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> it works well. Wow, I try, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> All great pieces of work are going to have a source of light. Where is your source light's, of light? Light's very, very important in this type, in this style of painting. The mm -hmm. light, especially if, like in a, in a photograph like this, where we've got a little track coming through the bush here, mm -hmm. there's a lot of light coming down because there's probably a few cleared trees here. Sure. A little bit more light coming down in this area. But what I do for the painting is I exaggerate the light. It needs to be interesting for the viewer, mm -hmm. interesting for the buyer, especially. They, mm. I want them to look at my paintings and go, oh, Wow, sure. look at that, look at that, and look at the depth in there. That, yeah. I mean, this is what I'm trying to achieve every time I pick up a brush. And I've had dozens of comments from people saying just how relaxing they look. Sure. Yeah. That's the idea of it. I mean, hanging well, it is. on the wall. And, it is, yeah. you know, and, it, and that comes back to me and just what I was feeling at the time and when, sure. I'm, when I was painting it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I was also noticing that you use the uh, Lucas quick drying oils as well, but you've got a combination, you've got Art Spectrum and Lucas combine. I mean, Lucas doesn't make this Australian red gold, do they? No, no. There's a lot of overseas companies that don't make the Aussie colours, and mm -hmm. sometimes you really need to look at purchasing colours that you know suit your surroundings. Mm -hmm. You know, so I basically don't stick to one brand. Mm -hmm. I like to try different brands out, just to just to get the results that I want. So as I'm heading towards this side of the of my painting, mm -hmm. you can see that. I'm using a little bit more mm -hmm. white. So as I slowly Into move over to this, uh, yeah, that's right. So yeah. our source of light is going to be a little bit whiter than our Naples, mm -hmm. which is the yellow one. It's this pattern that you're creating just, just by small strokes. There's this wonderful uh, ambience in the background starting to build. Whereas uh, if you're a beginner and you just start to slap it down, it's not going to work for you. You just have to no, take your time. No, no. And, and when I'm finished this as well, when I get to the other side, I actually come back with a softer brush than this one mm -hmm. and I will actually brush the lightest, lightest stroke mm -hmm. over the top of this mm -hmm. and that is to soften all of those strokes. We don't want them to be too apparent mm -hmm. um, but I will just soften them all off so that we get that beautiful out of focus effect yeah. and that's what we want. In creating this type of atmosphere in the back, yeah. you're really trying to bring the viewer in to the picture? That's right. I'm not forcing the viewer to sort of look into the centre, but usually when you keep your darker colours mm -hmm. on, the, on the exterior of your painting, yeah. it draws your eye into the centre, so there's a real focal point. Okay. 
into the centre of the painting. I get some great remarks from people just saying that, you know, oh, what have you done with that photo? Yeah. Like, you've just made it so special. And it's really just you a know, guide for you, isn't it? It's a guide yeah. and it's, it's just a little bit of reference that mm. I can turn into something special. Yeah. yeah. People just love it. So I'll, I'll take something that's dull and boring <laughs> <laughs> and I'll really make, spruce it up. make it exciting, make it exciting to look at, you know. And sometimes I don't even like to bring out the original photo because yeah. it looks nothing like the painting. Yeah. But if you look at look at Monet's work, I think he's probably one of the better examples, is that there's no great light and there's no great dark. These pictures sort of hover in the middle of the spectrum. Yeah, there's and nothing, I think nothing Monet, sort of goes and I way. think Monet did suggest too that his paintings were all made up of light. Mm. That was the main thing in his paintings, yeah. was that was the light. And this is why he painted with early morning light and then yeah. he painted with afternoon light or when the sun was yeah. was just just toppling down and a best friend of mine she she'll get up at three in the morning and go to these exotic places just to get that sunrise because the yeah. colors are different at sunrise the colors are different mm. through the bush yeah, they are. and she just picks up all these beautiful colors in her photographs and then she comes home and paints them yeah it's really the sense that as the sun comes through the atmosphere you know, if it's directly above, it doesn't have as far to go. Obviously in the Australian bush, you've got that eucalyptus oil and the dust and everything that's there, hence the mountains are blue. That's because right. Because of the eucalyptus oil. That's in the, right. In the We've got some amazing, amazing colours stuff. in our landscape. Just yeah. some amazing colours. It's just exciting. And we just need to nurture that yeah. and paint that and show the world how beautiful our country is. Okay, so for the next section here, we've got all the colours down. We really need to soften it off more. That's right. And you're going to use another brush to do that That's with? That's right. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to create an out of focus look, mm -hmm. a, just a very soft bush look, um, a little bit like an yeah, out of focus photography, that sort of thing. That's mm -hmm. kind of what I'm trying to get at. All right. So what I'll do is I'll put that little brush down, one mm -hmm. I was just using, and I'll pick up this one. I'll also pick up my nice little... Keep it clean. Keep it clean cloth. Yeah. And all I do is I drag the brush nice and feather-like over the top. It takes a little bit. It takes a little while to do. Mm -hmm. You've got to be careful that you don't lose a little, few of your highlights. So we just so it's really it light. Very very light. And you're still really using that crosshatch method, but just so slightly. Very very soft. Yeah. Very very soft. All right, well, as you can see, Janet's just using that really fine brush, very, very dry too, it's a dry brush technique, just to finish this off. But you can see the wonderful atmosphere that's been created in the background there. So obviously one of the techniques that we're going to be doing today, but that looks sensational, my dear. Thank you very much, Graham. Um, you, can, you can see that I've left this area open because mm. we do have a little track that runs through the bush here. Sure. Um, so I've left this, this area open so I, we can just sort of, we can play with it later on. We can mm -hmm. put trees over the top. Um, we can just create our wonderful little, wonderful little painting, just how we want it to be. Great atmosphere. All right, we're going to do some reflections now. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, well, as you can see, we've put the next piece up, lovely long painting, and you're going to be teaching us how to do reflections on the water this time. That's right. That's okay. Right. All right, well, let's make a start on that. Okay, well, uh, before I start, I actually look at what's going on in the painting. Uh -huh. I have some light penetrating down here. This is actually like almost like a bit of a wall going on here because we do have a waterfall to put in. Mm -hmm. When I think of a reflection in water, I'm thinking of a mirror. Mm -hmm. I always think of a mirror first. Because what does a mirror do? Mm -hmm. it reflects all those other colours that are around and that's what we see. Sure. So I think I, I, I look at reflections as, as a mirror of all those other colours that are happening. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just start by picking up a few of the colours. And we're coming up to a couple of little rocks here, mm -hmm. but we won't necessarily paint them in yet. I leave those for after. I try to create little areas of colour in the water, so that when I do blend them together at the end, they work really nicely together. Uh -huh. so 
I suppose as you were saying before is that sometimes you've just got to sit and study your subject matter before you even make a move sometimes. That's right. Just watch the water. That's right. I'm still using my two favourite colours, my ultramarine yeah. and my Australian red gold. It's amazing the variety that you actually get with those just two colours. Yeah, it's a bit hard to see what's going on at the moment because all we have are like areas of colour. You're not referencing photos at the moment, so this is all coming from the imagination area. That's right, yeah. definitely, definitely. That's why a lot of thought process has to really go into it before you actually start. Mm -hmm. Because in your head you know how you want it to finish up and you know how you want it to look when it's finished. Um, it's just getting that on the canvas. Watching Janet work, there's a sense of patience that's involved in doing this. There's a deliberate stroke. Okay, well we've uh, finished the reflection, or uh, that particular area, and you're going to put some of the logs and the rocks in for that's us That's right, that's right. Okay. I'll, yep. Excellent. Let's go. I've made a colour here, it's a bit of a mix between browns and greens and mm -hmm. those type of colours to represent this piece of timber here. Yeah. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, just going to try and replicate that again in the water. So once I've finished putting in a few little marks, we don't have to put everything in, but we yeah. just put a few little marks in here. Um, once I finish doing that, then we do drag it with the brush again. Okay. So we soften the whole thing at the end anyway. So it's not, a, it's not a really strong image, it's just a very, very soft one. Sometimes I need to enhance the moss a little bit in the water, just so it stands out against the dark. Mm -hmm. Some of the grasses will also be in the water, that's where you can you know, play around with Bit of, um, little little things that are touching yeah. the water and well that's probably going to explain how our reflections are done so excellent all right well I've got another piece that's almost finished and this one's really going to be about putting the final touches in to really really snap the painting so um, we'll take this one away and get on to the next one wonderful Okay, well as you can see we've got our third piece up and Janet is going to take us through the finer details of finishing off one of her pieces. So where do we go from here? Okay, well this one is almost finished, it's just got a few little tickles to do. So what I'll do now is I'm working with a little rigger brush here. Still really got the same palette there, haven't you? Same palette, yeah. same colours yep. on all three paintings today. So you're just putting in the backbone of the plant? Just putting in the backbone, just the shape. And the thing about, I mean, even going through with what Janet's doing today is that she is a really proficient teacher in all of the mediums. It's not just a matter of oils, she teaches watercolours, pastels, acrylics. You actually work with uh, nursing homes as well, don't you? And, I and do, yes, art, I do yeah. art therapy. That's yeah, right, art just therapy. teaching art therapy, which I think is just wonderful. It's such a great way to, uh, to bring the better part of people out. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We just have a ball together. Well, talking about art therapy, I actually saw one of your programs, Graham, where I think the lady's name was Tracy, yeah. and I was a little bit inspired with what she had, what she had done to, on her paintings, like the, her preliminary, mm -hmm. her preliminary uh, setting up the canvas, throwing on a whole lot of colours, working with cling wrap yes. or glad wrap, and and then producing these amazing little colour masterpieces yes. and so I took that idea to the nursing home uh -huh. and we did that the following week and and the residents were just in awe about <laughs> what we were going to do and how we were going to do it and as soon as uh, they were ready it was all hands on deck and they <laughs> They played with the canvas and they just had the most amazing time and I got my camera out and I took <laughs> lots of photos and mm -hmm. yeah, there were all so many smiles yeah. and um, it was just a fantastic afternoon. So I want to, I want to thank you for, you know, that having that on your program because <laughs> it was, it was just, it was just a one, we just had a wonderful day together and, and It's funny you say that, but Janet's doing exactly the same and that's inspiring people to, uh, to get the best out of themselves and then to explore themselves. So that's what right brain creativity can do. If you're in a bit of a slump uh, and you're not sure how the world's working for you, this is a great way to, absolutely. to, reach, to reach inside and find out who you are. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, you know. And you know, it's the same with music as well. Music and art and art therapy, they all go together. Yeah. 
Yeah. So be careful not to create too many soldiers standing in a row with these bubbles. <laughs> All has to look very natural. And once the painting is, is finished, or you think it's almost finished, I generally will let it sit for a couple of days uh -huh. and then I will study it, even before I sign it. So I will just keep looking, looking at the painting. Can I improve it? Sure. What, else, what, what else can I add to it to, to create interest? It talks to you in the end anyway, doesn't it? It does, yeah. it does. And I think that, that that's just that little bit of um, time and patience and energy that you put into the last, last minute details yeah. is very important. All right, well, another fascinating day. Thank you so much for having You're us in your studio, You're very Jenna. welcome. Uh, one wonderful, wonderful day. And, and uh, Australian bush and Australian nature is amazing and you portray it so well. And some of these scenes, just literally, you can see yourself melting into nature. And it's a very special quality that you have to be able to create things like that. Thank so you. Thank you, so, thank you so much for uh, being on the show and obviously showing all of the people out there what you do. Now, remember, as I said before, is that Janet is a highly skilled teacher been doing this for a long time, has a lot of really successful students, successful workshops, works with a whole bunch of different groups as well, which changes other people's lives, which is just wonderful. So if you would like to talk to Janet about her originals, uh, which I think are just a fantastic buy under any circumstances, or her workshops, you can go to www.janetknight.com.au. And obviously that's a K-N-I-G-H-T. <laughs> so on the bottom of the screen right now, as you can see, but uh, we're going to head north again. It's been great being down in Melbourne. Uh, as I said, any of the people down in Melbourne, come and see this lady. Uh, you'll have an unbelievably great time with her. Um, we, we have great people coming on board these days. Uh, lots of amazing artists. I mean, the talent is just incredible. And as you said, there's so many things that you're being able to take out of this to pass on as a legacy. Yeah, absolutely. To other people. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, really, it's been really fun. Yeah, and we, and we just love doing it. We really do. But um, yeah, uh, Facebook page, go in, um, sign up on Facebook with us. We've got thousands of people in these days. And also our website, you can see Janet's work in there as well, at colourinyourlife.com.au. To all our sponsors always, thank you so much. But as always, until we meet again, make sure you put some colour in your life. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye now. <laughs>